Hey, what is going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and it's time to continue on where I left off with testing the various firmwares. Uh, the T-Swift firmware against the PV Farmer firmware. You pick whichever one you like. In the last video, I wanted to hear from you which one you liked. I'm still looking for that information, but I just got everything spun up and I've been testing for the past 20 hours on the T-Swift firmware. Yes, I do have applied the 618 Giga Hash. But we're getting nowhere near those hash rates. Everybody's device is going to perform a little bit differently depending on a number of variables, thermals, uh, environmental conditions, so on and so forth. But the main thing is I wanted to look at the Ice River monitoring software and see what is going on. We're clocked at 550. One chip, chip number five, is acting silly. It's at 549. Thermals are okay-ish, right? As far as chip temperatures go, 57 is the highest I've seen during the peak heat here in Florida at the hottest time at the, in the middle of the day, and then 74 inboard temp, uh, 40 outboard temp. And even though we're seeing around 550 giga hash at the miner, at the pool, we're only averaging around 525, 523 giga hash. So not getting anywhere near that 618 giga hash. Now let's switch over to the PV Farmer and try to set it close to, because I can't see the voltages on here, uh, unfortunately. Try to set it as close as we can and see how the two compare. So let me do that right now. And first things first, I just want to reset everything back to factory. I'm going to stop reading my monitor because it's give me an error. And I just want to restore everything. We can hold the button on the machine or restore it uh, through the firmware upgrade back to the stock firmware, uh, which I have everything I need right here. I got the stock firmware. I got the PB Farmer firmware. I got the ICE, uh, excuse me, this T-Swift firmware. Everything I need is right here. I'm just going to re restore everything and give the PB Farmer a fresh start. And just like updating the firmware in the past, whenever you apply it under the firmware upgrade settings, selecting the file and update, operation succeed, we hit OK. It's going to ask us that we need to restart. Click OK. Let the machine restart. Let it get its bearings. Uh, give it about a minute or so. And then we can refresh this IP for the machine, whatever IP address you assigned or your network assigns to it. And it, this T-Swift should go away. We should be back to stock iServer firmware. Then we could come back here and apply the PB Farmer. Just give the machine time in between all of this is what I would recommend. Now, because PB Farmer gives us so many great features, right? Configurable clocks and voltage all set, uh, better fan control, so on and so forth, and a lot of data and metrics that I love to see and I would wish would be applied to other firmwares like the T-Swift one or any other third parties out there. I would urge caution because you don't want to go testing and tuning stuff that you don't know what it's going to do. If you never played around with any voltage tuning, clock tuning, anything like that, whether it's CPU, GPU, FPGA, I would urge caution just going around changing different things, trying to max out your K0, whatever it might be, whether it's the regular, the pro, the ultra, or any new versions that come out in the future after this video is released. Just be careful. They do have notes here. Voltage can be increased or decreased to any integer value uh, within hardware limits. Uh, with changes taking effect immediately, settings will be rounded down to the nearest multiple uh, 6.25 millivolts internally for everything that, uh, but the KS0 Pro. A simple model to keep in mind is that for every uh, 25 millivolts increase, the proper increments are 7 millivolts, 6 millivolts, 6 millivolts, 6 millivolts, or for example, 7, 13, 19, 25, and the first 25 millivolts. I'm going to test and tune offline. And I will give you my summary, but I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. What is the best settings on PB Farmer that you like to use with your KS0, whatever model it is, but please specify that model in the comment section. But to update, same thing as last time. We come over here to the firmware upgrade. I'm not sure why it's cutting up, why T-Swift's logo is still here, but it's cut off. It's on the stock firmware, but anyways, you go to firmware upgrade, select file. You need to go to where you have that particular firmware version downloaded, hit OK and then update it's going to operation succeed it's going to ask you to reboot or restart the device and then load it on up and let it get settled in and you'll see your graphical user interface right your gui uh, or ui completely change when you log into the ip of that machine once again with the pb farmer version once the device is rebooted and you go to the ip you might get the security warning because it's not connecting via https you just want to click advance in the bottom left and then proceed to the IP. It's going to warn you it's unsafe, but you're just connecting to a device over your network unsecurely. As long as it's on your local area network and not some bogus website you're trying to get to on the internet in a public space, then you should be fine. Just be careful. 
Now we can log in with the default login information. Once you're in, your browser, like Google Chrome, will warn you that the password's not too safe, as we've seen it before. And of course, a software disclaimer. This is not, or no liability should be placed on the developer for PV Farmer. You should be doing this at your own risk and understand it is at your own risk and accept the terms, right? They're not liable, yada, 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 government law, compliance laws, all that other stuff. You hit accept, just understand the risk. There's dark mode, there's light mode. In the upper right-hand corner, we can just turn that off. Boom, dark mode, love it. Great, looks good. Grass looks great, I love it. PV Pharma killed it. So you got in the upper uh, right-hand side, not the left side, you got dark mode, light mode. You can change the language and you got the power button where we can log out, sleep, reboot, and shut down. Now, normally in the default Ice River firmware and even T-Swift, we can only restart the machine. There isn't a, there's a restart, but there isn't a sleep or shut down. So I love it. Good button options right here. And then on the left hand side we got some of the similar items or menu items that we had before home minor network account firmware obviously firmware is going to be where we can go to update the firmware and pb farmer does come out with updates on a regular basis two weeks ago was the last one i got here but just keep an eye on their github i'll link it leave a link down in the description to get the latest one then you got account where you got to change the password i recommend changing the password do not leave it one two three four five six seven eight please uh, API tokens, you can create your own, add a new token, save or delete the one that's already there. Uh, network, obviously, is going to pick up on your local area network um, and show you what device or uh, IP is assigned. You can do DHCP or static. Uh, I like to do things static, but through my own router. And then you can also add certificates if need be. Upload, download, regenerate, whatever it might be. You see in the bottom right-hand side, we got locate machine and factory reset. All the same buttons that we're familiar with, but the GUI just looks a lot better. However, there is no pool configured. So one, we need to configure a pool, but two, we need to understand uh, the warning here. Overclocking can be dangerous, especially when uh, applied without caution. Best practices to increase in small increments when ensuring temperatures remain under control. A power meter monitor uh, to monitor the power draw is highly recommended. We do have one. We were sitting about 186 with T-Swift on there. Uh, so now we're going to see what we can do to try to make this thing more efficient. So we need to click I understand and add a pool. What I like to do is add a pool first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I click save in the upper right hand corner. I'm blocking it. There you go. You hit save. Now you can add multiple pools if you want to. You can have multiple backups. However you want to have it set up. I'm in the US so I'm probably just going to stick with this one. We might do this guy right here. Uh, but I'm probably just going to leave it. Maybe EU is the next one that I might do in case... The U.S. server decides to act a fool. I doubt it, though. Uh, and then set up the password however you want. Usually people do X instead of uh, anything in there. But that is my pool setup. Now we need to go ahead and click on I understand. And now we can mess around with clock offset and voltage offset. The cool thing is, is we can still use the Ice River monitor, I believe. Let me test and confirm that. All right, confirmed. So obviously we need to give it some time because we just gave it the IP. Um, this is not showing the correct pools or anything like that because I just added it in there. But right now our chips are sitting at 355, and so we can tune and adjust from there. Now, I don't know what the voltage is going to sit at, so I'm probably just going to chill and wait and see what we can do. Like right now, here we go. We actually got some voltage information where the Ice uh, River monitor from T-Swift didn't show that, at least for my model. I'm not sure if it shows it for your model, but we should be at, what is that, 1.3 uh millivolts chip voltages how is this being measured is that 1.3 millivolts or one no 1 1.3 volts 1310 millivolts there you go yep 1310 millivolts is where we're sitting when we're running at the current chip clocks of 355 so now it comes down to testing and tuning and don't overcook your hardware you will greatly regret it if you did that's why it, they have a disclaimer and you have to agree to the terms and click you understand when it comes to tuning but we can come back here and adjust the offset and the voltages as well and then we can also set the fan speed to fixed fan speed of i'm going to put 50 percent just to go in line with the thermal results that we were testing in a previous video or maybe a video that you might watch later on uh, but yeah so 0% increase from 1312 millivolt base voltage. So 1312 or 1310 millivolts is the base clocking up from there because we couldn't see what the clocks jumped up to when we were at 550 
megahertz per core or per uh, chip that's where the fine tuning and the adjustments need to be so i'm going to start to test and tune incrementing bit by bit see if there's any configurations i can find online and i'll come back with a summary of the results all right so after a number of hours of testing and tuning and let this baby run uh we're doing pretty good we were actually able to get the same hash rate as the t-swift firmware using pb farmer at 20 watts less uh matter of fact if i pull up my power meter we're doing 166 uh on the power draw compared to the 186 we were doing at the same hash rate however that's not the full picture uh, a couple things i want to notate here when you're tuning this thing you don't want these choppy peaks and valleys you want to make that as smooth out as possible kind of like what you see here on greater goods video additionally you could see the voltage on the right hand side his voltage is bouncing between 1470 and 1480 and that's not a big big deal but look at how stable my voltage is it's just consistently at 1480 so i am over volting my chips for what i am doing and that is because the chips right now are sitting at 480 instead of the 550 that t swift was showing or that we were getting with the t swift firmware the 1618 gigahash one and so that means i have headroom in order to push these chips a little bit further by upping the megahertz so we're going to do like 520 550 get up to 555 eventually in the future offline but i can definitely tell you that the pb farmer is going to allow you to be more efficient with your ks0 ks0 pro ultra whatever model it is but i want to hear from you what your settings are by the way down in the comments make sure you specify your model just so that people have that right so they're not applying the clocks for your ultra onto your regular pro or the regular uh, ks0 uh, but definitely share that information in the comment section down below but also Look at the chip temperatures. So even though it's around the same time of day, peak heat here in Florida, 55 is the highest. I think the highest we saw was 57 on TSIF firmware. So we're un we're not hitting the same clocks, but we're getting the same hash rate with 20 watts less. And there's a lot of tunability that I can do with this data and information. And I am still using the iServer monitoring software just to compare and contrast things between the GUI or the graph that we get from PV Farmer. But here are the clocks I have. Again, I can push this further. I can do 180 megahertz or 200 megahertz on the clock offset with the voltage I have set. I have 155 on my uh, offset for voltage. But, you know, like Rabid Mining and, uh, and uh, Greater Good, I think, had something different. For example, Greater Good has 200 megahertz on their clock offset and 150 on their voltage offset. So we're same in the voltage, but the clocks I could push further while Rabid Mining had 35 on the clock offset, and I think 100 millivolts on the voltage offset in one of their videos. PB Farmer just gives you the, the extra tunability that you wouldn't get with the T-Swift firmware, where you just plug it in, update, restart the machine, put in your mining information, your pool, wallet address, and that's it. So if you want to just simple set it and forget it, the T-Swift firmware is good. It's only a 0.5 dev fee. PB Farmer has a 1% dev fee with a chance that it might increase in the future, which is the biggest con out of the two. But it does give you more tunability and efficiency on this on your devices if you choose to use it. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments as well as the clocks and settings that you recommend. Now note that everybody's clocks and settings are going to vary because you might be in a different area. Somebody that's in Canada, as I said many times before, in a more wintry, colder climate, might might be able to clock higher and perform better than me here in hot tropical florida so just bear that in mind and tune based upon your settings or your environmental conditions or thermal conditions but again sound off in the comments down below and do me a favor on the way out hit that like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date so let's check out additional links in the description that will support the channel and what we do here and you just have yourself a wonderful day take care i'll catch you in the next one and yes i shaved after that last part of the video it's the next day Duh.